The Industrial Revolution marks the single and most radical period of human history. In purely practical terms, it was nothing short of a complete transformation, changing almost every single aspect of human life. For most of human existence, man had used his hands or animals for physical labor. This continued throughout the centuries and across the globe, no matter how advanced the civilizations were. Survival rested on the shoulders of a man's physical prowess, as most people were farmers or peasants. However, these concepts seem foreign to our modern understanding of life. In the last three centuries, life has become increasingly industrialized. Mechanical power has taken over the use of brute force. Physics and engineering have altered our productivity and quality of life. Before we dissect life during the Industrial Revolution, it is important to ask why did the Industrial Revolution happen when it did? Why did the ancient world's great civilizations not take a step towards industrialization? The Industrial Revolution could not have taken place in antiquity because the contemporary means of production and slave-based economy served to maintain the status quo. The Arabic translation of ancient Greek literature rekindled the fire of reason and rationale. The scholars of the Renaissance followed suit and started to challenge the traditional norms of thinking. The scientific revolution began gaining momentum in the late 16th century. By the 17th century, the Age of Enlightenment was well underway, and intellectuals and philosophers were questioning dogmas and the historical institutions of power. Knowledge started trickling down, and since Europe was getting richer on the backs of their colonies, people did not have to worry about living hand to mouth. All of this translated into a burst of creativity and innovation that brought about several technological inventions. The uptick in trade and economy brought skilled workers, artists, and scientists together. Britain was home to textile businesses of all kinds, cotton, wool, linen. All of this work was done by hand, and there was plenty of it to go around. Soon, people started coming up with new inventions. Slowly but surely, the industry produced simple mechanical tools to serve specific needs. Thanks to this mechanical innovation, cloth started getting manufactured at a rapid pace. A wave of urbanization followed, during which skilled labor, excess capital, and scientific and technological advances worked in tandem to jumpstart a revolution. In an interview, economic historian Joel Mokir told the Washington Post, the 19th and 20th century are in many ways the most transformative centuries in all of human history. It is hard to disagree with them. In the 18th century, life witnessed major social and economic changes. For starters, family structures changed dramatically. Up until that point in history, families had stuck together, and people were close with members of their extended families as well. This familiarity bred communities, and the rural lifestyle encouraged it. Industrialization took hold with the scientific changes, especially the invention of the internal combustion engine and the steam engine. Thus, family circles became smaller, and the concept of family tightened as well. Parents, children, and siblings were family. The rest of the blood relations were no longer tethered to the main unit. All of this can be attributed to people leaving their homes to seek employment in urban cities. People did not leave their relatives altogether, but the nature of communication changed drastically. Urbanization had witnessed an upward surge since the late Middle Ages, but it was now happening at an unprecedented pace. Depending on the size of the family, one member or more would leave their respective families and move to big cities to earn a livelihood. The long stretch between loved ones created a hostile environment, and social niceties fell by the wayside. This urbanization gave rise to banks, labor unions, and other economic junctures of the kind. While it is certainly clear that the Industrial Revolution was a step towards a new future and a recipe for unprecedented progress, it is also arguable that it created an asymmetry in the world of global politics. At the time, all major European nations had colonies around the globe. They shipped the labor work to colonized regions and reaped the benefits. The Western capitalist strata increased the status of workplace jobs at home while the worst and least respectable jobs was distributed offshore. Britain, France, Austria, Germany, Russia, Spain, Portugal, Italy, and Belgium feature heavily as the countries that colonized most of Eurasia and Africa. These countries ripped the African and Asian nations to the bone, leaving them rotting with more problems than ever before. For instance, consider South Africa's history under colonial rule. Since the 17th century, 
the Dutch East India Company had started to settle in the western part of the country. In the early 19th century, the British arrived, and after the expulsion of 1811-1812, the country spiraled into war for the next 70 years. In 1819, the British came out on top and continued their order of settler capitalism for years to come. Despite the wars, the perpetuated back-and-forth violence, the British were the overwhelming constant in the equation. The deep-seated racism that would mar the South African socio-political realms in the next two centuries can also be traced back to Britain. The social order that defined the post-1840s was primarily segregated by race. The slave trade had completely destabilized the African land. The years of apartheid left social relations in ruins. The dwindling pendulum of possession and dispossession left a permanent mark on the region's history. And most of this possession and dispossession was the direct result of the displacement of cultural norms by the imperialists for the sake of maximizing production. The same goes for the slave trade that, in many ways, built the United States as we know it today. Hundreds of thousands of African slaves were fed to the American dream, along with the heaps of violence, hatred, and injustice. Can one even begin to comprehend what North America or Europe would look like had it not been for the backs of American slaves and Asian labor? The answer, of course, is a resounding no. If you go back to the 1800s, everybody was poor. I mean everybody. The Industrial Revolution kicked in and a lot of countries benefited, but by no means everyone. Bill Gates In other words, living in the era of the Industrial Revolution was not a great experience for everyone. People had just begun the journey towards a progressive lifestyle, but there was still a long way to go. The Industrial Revolution is usually divided into three eras. The First, Second, and Third Industrial Revolutions. The First Industrial Revolution refers to the period between the 1760s and the 1860s. When people talk about the Industrial Revolution, they usually refer to this first era. In this era, the use of steam, petroleum, and water helped establish a clean break from previous ideas. The technological shift was huge. Iron and steel became sought-after commodities. All of these things impacted the social and cultural norms immensely in the years to come. The successive period of industrial growth was called the Second Industrial Revolution, dating from the 1870s and 1940s. During this era, mass production became the need of the hour, not to mention a lucrative business model. This rapid industrialization was readily visible in Britain, Germany, and the United States, while France, Italy, and Japan followed closely behind. During this period, the United States truly emerged as a force to be reckoned with, flourishing economically and surpassing most of its peers. Things changed quickly around the world. Railways were built everywhere. Electricity was no longer a luxury, it was a common household utility. A system of pipes started to supply gas and water to apartments and buildings. Even sewage systems became more complex. Cities continued to grow beyond anyone's imagination. Their density increased in terms of people, infrastructure, and activity. Factories regulated the workers, while entrepreneurs and businessmen acted on their ambitions and expanded their ventures. The increased industrial and agricultural production at lower costs decreased the prices of everyday goods and luxurious items in the general market. This led to failing businesses and lower jobs, causing economic depressions and recessions globally. By the early 1920s, Motor vehicles were common luxury items seen on roads in all the major urban cities of Europe and America. The nature of communications also began to change. With the expansion of the paper market, newspapers became the bearer of socio-political events. Telephone lines were installed first in cities and then in rural areas and smaller towns. Telephones and radios entered homes, resulting in the globalization and standardization of these facilities across borders. An international telegraph network had made communication between different continents much easier, helping them coordinate their trade and commerce in a much more detailed fashion. The Second Industrial Revolution, which continued until the Second World War, saw the greatest economic surge recorded in history up until that time. The Third Industrial Revolution, or the Digital Revolution, is a phenomenon that completely changed how the world interacted with itself especially in terms of the transfer of information and the nature of communication. It was a monumental rearrangement of social, economic, and political structures known to man. It began shortly after the Second World War and later gave way to the Information Age. 
Techniques and innovations shifted from analog and mechanical technology to digital electronics. The city workforce started donning hats and coats to go to work in offices. Life aligned itself without the blood and sweat of mechanical work. The future belonged to the nuances of information technology. The most significant alteration in post-World War II history occurred with the invention of the digital computer, a term which, broadly speaking, covers almost all the electronic devices in use today. With the advent of digital machines, the nature of data and information sharing saw a complete overhaul. Records that were kept in physical form – files, books, manuscripts, diaries – all started to find their way into digital records. The art of manual bookkeeping was no longer viable. A touch of a button was enough to create heaps of records. Records still had to be typed into machines, but the whole job was much easier than writing them individually, as hands started to cramp and the use of cursive writing dwindled. Coal took over wood as the primary energy source in the First Industrial Revolution. In the Second Industrial Revolution, oil took over coal. In the Third Industrial Revolution, new energy sources did emerge. Still, it was not where the energy came from, but where it went and how it was utilized that was of interest. With the advent of AI and automation of industry-based jobs, scholars are referring to the current era as the beginning of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Ever since it started in the 17th and 18th centuries, industrialization has seen its fair share of critique. They point out that factory culture born in this era is responsible for the ills of late-stage capitalism. Radical political philosophies, like communism, started to pop up to counter this issue. Political and artistic thought underwent severe changes. Modernism challenged traditional classic forms and advocated for novelty and creativity. During the Industrial Revolution, the proletariat painted itself in the role of the worker, working diligently per the company clock. People began being stuck in factories, and various attractions started popping up to keep them occupied in their after-work hours. This created an inflated middle class not just in Europe and America, but also globally. It is hard to imagine what the world would look like without the Industrial Revolution. Technology has changed how we think and tackle problems. With other survivalist urges taken care of, we have had time to focus on other issues. Economic stability has prompted us to use our resources on other matters. Humanitarian causes and social issues, like resolving class and gender discrimination, never gained much traction outside of a government push. But with extra time on their hands, people are now free to pursue these agendas privately. Most importantly, it was the only movement for its time whose effects were felt relatively quickly across the globe. To learn more about what it was like to live during the Industrial Revolution, check out our book, The Industrial Revolution a captivating guide to the period of major industrialization and the introduction of the spinning jenny, the cotton gin, electricity, and other inventions. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free mythology bundle ebook while they're still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.